Hi everyone, Liz Klimek here, Planetarium Manager at the South Carolina State Museum. Well, first off, happy solstice. For those of us here in the Northern Hemisphere, winter just recently officially started. And furthermore, we're getting much closer to Christmas, which means that some of you might be scanning the skies looking for Santa. So what will the nightscape be like for his journey? While Santa himself might be pretty hard to spot, and actually I would argue pretty nearly impossible to spot from the ground, here are some things that you'll be sure to see. This is the sky as it would appear on Friday, December 24th at 6.30 p.m. We're looking directly south from Columbia, South Carolina. We're off towards the southwest. We have our line of bright planets. Now the brightest of them, unfortunately, is getting really low and is going to be setting soon, but you can see Venus earlier in the evening, a bit farther up off the horizon. You can even see Venus before it gets totally dark. If we look more upwards, we'll come to the much dimmer but still visible Saturn, and higher up yet, we will have the bright planet Jupiter. And what's really nice about all these three planets being up is that they're fairly bright. And so if you get out early enough in the evening and it's clear in this direction, you're pretty guaranteed to be able to see these three, even if you have a fair bit of light pollution. Now looking high overhead, there is a big square up here. And this square is nicknamed the Great Square. It is part of a constellation called Pegasus, which is a flying horse. Although the constellation is half of that flying horse. And he's doing a big backflip over all of us in the sky. Now, if we turn our gaze over here towards the east, we're going to see part of the winter sky. Let me zoom in a bit here so we can see a few things more easily. So then there's going to be this object right here, which a lot of people, not all, but a lot of people have mistaken as uh, the Little Dipper, because it does kind of have a dipperish shape if you give that a good long stare. Uh, but this is actually a star cluster called the Pleiades or the Seven Sisters. So it's essentially a group, you can kind of think of it as a family or pack or flock of stars that are basically traveling through space together as they orbit around the center of our galaxy. And then next door to the the Pleiades star cluster, we have this V shape here. And this V shape is actually composed of another star cluster called the Hyades, which are these uh, dim stars right here. And then there is a bright orangish star that just happens to lie in this direction and complete that letter V shape. But this star is not part of the Hyades star cluster. It's just a bright orange star called Aldebaran. But all together, Aldebaran and the Hyades make up the face of a constellation called Taurus the Bull. So here's the bull's face. And then he's got some stars that represent his very long horns. And then some really dim stars that kind of go down into the rest of his torso there. Here's an idea of what Taurus might look like. Now Taurus is glaring at a person who is rising up out of the eastern horizon to challenge him, and he's not too happy about that. It's a pattern of stars that a lot of people look forward to seeing around the end of the year. And in order to see that star pattern fully, I will need to nudge time forward just about a half hour. 
So you can see the sky turn as I take us up to 7 p.m. on the night of the 24th. And now we have fully above the horizon, the constellation of Orion the Hunter. Here are the stars in Orion. So imagine these two stars being his shoulders and then these two stars being his legs or feet. There are one, two, three stars in a row that form his belt called Orion's belt. And these are the brightest stars in the constellation of Orion and the ones that are most likely to stand out the most. But if you have access to darker skies, you might be able to see some of the dimmer stars, the stars that make up his outstretched arm. And it always seems to me as if he's holding a shield. And then he has one arm thrown back behind him. Sometimes he's seen holding a club or something like that. And there are also some dimmer stars that form a sword that hangs from his belt. And even more dimmer stars that are kind of where his uh, head would be up here. And here's an idea of what Orion might look like. And once again, here is Taurus the bull. So as you can see, they are facing each other off and they will continue to stare each other down as they make their way across the sky from east to west over the course of the night. So these are the brighter things that you should be able to see from most locations unless you have a ton of stray city lights that drown out some of the dimmer things up there. What's nice about this time of the evening is that the moon has not risen yet. So the moon does not rise on this night until about 1030, which gives you nice dark skies to scan not only for planets and star clusters, but perhaps Santa as well. I personally think that Santa would be pretty difficult to spot and I would actually argue nearly impossible to spot from the ground just because being a person so high up in the sky he'd be a super duper duper tiny little speck and traveling pretty fast at the same time he has a lot of places to be in one night so he probably has a really tight schedule and is probably just zipping along up there but if you're determined to try, or if you just wanna take a break from all of the hustle and bustle of the holidays and take some time to yourself, some quiet moments to take in some beautiful twinkly lights, maybe lights that you didn't have to fight to untangle and put up yourself, you just might be rewarded with some little surprises. There are things up in the sky that we often don't notice because you'll miss them if you only glance up for a few moments every now and then. But if you've got some time, and by some time, I mean at least 15, 20, better yet, even 30 minutes to just go outside, find a nice, comfortable spot to lay back and look up and see as much of the sky as possible. Definitely bundle up if it starts to get really cold. But if you take some time to really look at the sky, give your eyes some time to adjust to the change in light level, you might be able to see a little streak of light across the sky. It could come from any direction and that would be a meteor. Sometimes people think they have to wait for a meteor shower in order to see a meteor but meteor showers just make it a little more likely for you to be able to see a meteor. Um, but you can really see them any time of the year in any part of the sky. You just have to be patient and really watch and wait because you'll have no idea from what direction you'll see them. And basically, if you see one, it's just a little bit of space dust burning up harmlessly in Earth's atmosphere. 
Another thing you might be able to see is something that'll look like a little faint star that's just traveling through the star field, kind of like a little star that's just wading through a sea of stars or wandering through a forest of stars. And if you see that, it's going to be one of the thousands of satellites that orbit the Earth. So I can actually give you an idea of what seeing a satellite up in the sky might look like. So here I have a little symbol that just represents a satellite up in the sky at the center of this blue box. But keep in mind a satellite is again just going to look like a tiny little dim star up in the sky. And as time goes forward, you'll just see that tiny little dim dot drift through the star field. Now I wouldn't worry about looking for a specific satellite or trying to figure out exactly where in the sky to look. Basically just look as high up above the horizon as you can to ensure that you're looking above any ground fog or sky glow or trees and buildings. And even though not all satellites are visible, there's enough of them up there that your chances of just stumbling across one is actually pretty good. Just to keep just keep in mind that you need really dark, clear skies as the satellites are pretty faint. Even if you have beautiful dark country skies, remember that as soon as that moon rises, it's going to be a, a lot brighter in the sky and that will also make things a little more difficult. You could even make a game of it, just bundle up with some family and friends, go out, do some stargazing and see how many of these you can find maybe see who can find the most and just have fun with it. So I hope this gives you a nice assortment of things you can go out and look for in the evening skies this weekend. Whether you're looking for Santa or not, I hope that you will enjoy all of the wonderful things up above. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Don't forget to click below to like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. But most importantly, make sure that you take care of yourselves and each other. Have a wonderful and safe end of the year. Happy holidays, and I look forward to seeing you all, whether virtually or in person at the State Museum in 2022. Thanks again, and bye-bye for now.